Hello everyone, welcome back! It is time to go looking at terminals today! Oh boy, it's gonna be fun. Don't even just wants to jump on top of it, but you, know, you can't do that, man. He can't do that, the game won't let him. I mean, he clearly has enough height, but he just can't do it because, you know, invisible walls and stuff like that to make sure you can't jump on things you're not supposed to jump on. But anyway, everyone, hope you're all doing well today. It is time we go looking at topics to explore. Lenigus Detachable Harvester X Terminal. A large shield astral energy converter that primarily converts the elemental composition of Dana's astral energy to, and transmits it to Rena. Activation and control of astral energy conversion is achieved by placing the Sovereign, Maiden, and Rena's Alma within the central core of Lenigus. It is a comprised of classified and essential personnel residence zones around a, a large conduit, along with a defensive layer surrounding them. This outer layer is deployed upon activation, unlocking the central conduit while simultaneously functioning as a stabilization mechanism. Due to its design, deployment of the outer layer is expected to cause damage to residential zones. However, because that only takes place during the final stage of the spirit channeling ceremony, no contingency plan is to address said damage is needed. Until that phase, Lenigus serves as the central base of operations for the management and execution of the Crown Countess Sundana, warning any personnel with level 3 author authority or lower is strictly forbidden from a classified zone. Any violators will be immediately executed. Select this object to explore. Attachable Harvester. A massive spirit vessel placed on Dana for the spirit channeling ceremony. It serves as the tip of Lenigus conduit from what which it separates. Upon landing in Dan waters, it extends two sets of conducting pathways. The vertical pathways connect to the center of Dana. Meanwhile, the horizontal pathways proceed to envelop the entire surface of Dana. Once activated, it links to the biological spirit vessels placed in each realm, efficiently harvesting the planet's astral energy and mass. The accumulated energy is then transmitted to Rena via Lenigus. Because construction and adjustment take place in the Forbidden Zones regulator area, Lenigus outer layer must be deployed prior to launch. Intended to function semi-autonomously only, maintenance personnel are expected to manually interface with it when necessary. No other personnel is required for it to function. Addendum 1, Detachable Harvester 1, was lost on Dana after exploding due to the rampancy exhibited by the Sovereign. Addendum 2, Detachable Harvester 2's landing point will remain the same as that of the previous model. This is due to the explosion of the previous model, which altered the planetary topography, enabling an easier connection to the center of Dana. Select topic to explore? None. <coughs> hmm. Interesting. What about you? So, date of mask and brainwashing reports, so these are all got something different. Two different topics, huh? A device covering the wearer's whole face that restricts their mental activity. It was developed for the purpose of pacifying prisoners. Medical applications are also recognized particularly as a means of preventing patients from sustaining mental trauma. However, doing so is not recommended as prolonged use of the device carries the risk of inducing a number of adverse side effects. Addendum. Due to the loss of production facilities incurred from the partial destruction of Lenigus, additional devices will no longer be manufactured. Select the topic to explore. Greenwashing report. After receiving reports of a robust new form of rule emerging in Dana's water realm, a study was commissioned to investigate the matter in depth. The system is unique in that it elevates only the Lord as the supreme authority while relegating both Renans and Dans alike to enslavement. Test subject 10105 serves the realm's current Lord and has achieved this without the use of any special powers, drugs, or special devices. Rather, this is done by the sheer governance. Given this method's effectiveness at population control, monitoring the situation will continue. Addendum 1. Collapse of cognitive facilities via extreme mental repression rooted in violence and fear has proven to be key to this style of rule. Once a subject loses its autonomy, they become desensitized to fear and subsequently cease to prioritize even their own personal safety. Though such a state is ill-suited for commanding officers, it remains an effective way to cultivate disposable infantry and slaves from manual labor. Addendum 2. Soldiers in Lenigus who have undergone this treatment will be asked to secure as classified sectors to the trial. The results will be monitored. Select the topic to explore. Exit terminal. Hmm. Well, pretty messed up anyway, for sure. <coughs> Select the topic to explore. Lords and Unique Adjustment Index Test Subject Report. Each crown contest, five of the best qualified members of the Renan populace are chosen to act as lords, vying to serve as the next sovereign. During their tenure, they are granted level 3 authority, as well as one of five elemental realms to administer, and its corresponding master corps. 
They are also assigned an ID crest to indicate their des designated element. Section process is based only on astral artistry and physical and mental aptitude. Other variables such as age have no bearing whatsoever. I see. If only the strongest go on to become lords, the position itself does not inherently make an individual any stronger. It should be noted, however, that lords are not the only individuals capable of drawing out of Master Corps' powers. All rands must take part in a selection process and acceptance. The position is mandatory. It is not allowed for those deemed suitable to decline. Furthermore, in the event that an acting lord is incapacitated and can no longer serve in their position, a replacement must be quickly prepared. Well, I sure as heck didn't do that for the other... the others. It's like a topic to explore. Unique Adjustment Index Test Subject Report. The following is a report on the second successful case of Sovereign Test Subject Experimentation. Test Subject 10105, given name Volron, Generation NA, Unique Adjustment Index, Ethnicity NA. Although subject possesses high latent potential, it exhibits a significant mental instability, along with a strong distaste for following orders. As such, the risk it poses surpass even those of the last successful subject, itself a failure, and is therefore under consideration for disposal. Addendum. This is the first successful case in 300 years. Previously mentioned risk factors are now mitigated due to the established control protocols. Subject is to be evaluated under the assumption that Plan 2 will, and will proceed and will be dispatched to Dana under the disguise of serving a, as a lord. Select a topic to explore. Exit terminal. Oh boy. Select topic to explore. Master cores and spirit cores. Master cores are instruments of power and astral energy that belongs to one of the six elements. Five of these master cores, those with earth, water, fire, wind, and light, are loaned to Ren and Lords at the same time of the crown contest. Only the dark master core is maintained inside the Forbidden Zone until the Renis Almas, Almas is ready to be reformed. Its existence kept top secret. Underneath the master core's spherical outer layer is a force field crystal used for the purpose of astral energy containment and stabilization. Inside the force field, astral energy is stored in a dormant state. For the duration of their tenure, each lord competes in the crown contest to a master allotted type of astral energy. In the event of an emergency, each lord may be allowed to withdraw from the respective stock of astral energy as necessary. However, the extent allowed is determined based on their own individual strength. Addendum 1. Design flaws have been discovered in how the Renis Almas materializes. Be advised that active master cores may resonate with other master cores when get in close proximity and become unstable. Addendum 2. Due to a successful regeneration of the Renis Almas, Master Cores will cease to be deployed and the Crown Contest will be permanently halted. I thought we could explore. I'm gonna leave for a second because I want to also look at this real quick. <coughs> oh, this is a separate terminal for more stuff. Okay. The Sovereign. The Sovereign acts as Lennox's central control device for the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. Each one is granted level 2 authority and an ID crest. A Danon subject serves as the base of its creation. In theory, ideal candidates possess equal affinity for every astral element. However, such aptitude is statistically rare to uncover within real-world conditions. As a result, most subjects die during the adjustment period, and this ability is still not guaranteed for those who survive it. This instability, coupled with the Sovereign's powers of astral manipulation, was a high risk to the security of Lenigus if left unchecked. As such, stabilization measures must be put in place via the support mechanism when utilizing the Sovereign in the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. Addendum 1. No effective alternate methods to perform the ceremony have been found. Trials on Danon subjects are authorized to continue. Addendum 2. Unit 2 adjustments are a success. Subsequent adjustments are to be put on hold while extended observations take place. Select the topic to explore. The Maiden. The Maiden acts as a Sovereign support mechanism for the spirit channeling ceremony, each one is granted level 2 authority and an ID crest. A Renin subject serves its functions, provides providing the Sovereign with a supplemental dark astral it, it lacks in tandem with the Renis Almas. During the ceremony, it is partially responsible for astral energy conversion, as well as maintaining stability over the Sovereign's own powers. Additionally, the degree of intimacy between it and the Sovereign have been observed to positively impact the level of stability in both subjects. Because of this, Trial activations of the Sovereign without the Maiden present are expressly forbidden. Furthermore, neither the Sovereign nor the Maiden are to be informed about the details of the Spirit Channeling Plan. Addendum 1. Mental instability in the Maiden has been deemed the cause of the past Sovereign's rampancy. 
countermeasures must be considered. Addendum 2, in line with plan adjustments, the current subject will be will have its maiden registration revoked and be returned to his original household. Mmm, I see. And last but not least, the spirit cores. Spirit cores are end terminals used for the collection of astral energy. When embedded in a biological subject, it establishes connections throughout its body. These connections are used to amass astral energy generated from physical activity, which is then emitted from the host body itself. Because this emitted energy is prone to diffuse, the host must be placed within range of a spirit vessel for the energy to be collected. This means that Danans must be employed to harvest astral energy for the purpose of the crown contest. Given the difficulty in producing them, it is advised that spirit cores be retrieved from host bodies and reused upon their death. Spirit cores can also be embedded in Zoogles to control them via Astro Arts. Addendum. Increased physical load on a host body tends to produce increased astral energy emissions. Final confirmation of ideal workload to impose on host bodies without inducing death for maximum astral energy yields is still pending. Select topic to explore. Exit. Wait, I thought I had to do all these. Did I not have to do all these? <coughs> hmm. well, I guess we're able to run up here now, so sure. That seems pretty cool anyway, uh, I guess. What? Oh, I didn't even see that. Grape gel, let's go! We got the gels of the grapes indeed! What we got going on here? Nothing? Treasure chest. A room unchanged over three centuries. Looks like time itself has stopped here. What do you got? Three life bottles. I'll certainly take that. Definitely need more life bottles for sure. We've used a few of them lately. Uh oh. It's more astro energy. You know what that means? Oh, it's the iron mask. Mayori, I... I... Don't talk. I have to do this. I gave you my word that I'd help you return to Dana. The next time you open your eyes, you'll be home. But you... My place is here with my people. I still have a duty to fulfill. I'm sorry for what you've endured. Rena never should have dragged you into this. It's not your burden to bear. What? The mask contains a sedative. It should keep your mind from tearing itself apart any further. Let yourself go to sleep. This should help with the pain. Time to go, Elfin. Farewell. Sleep. His injuries are worse than I thought. Short-term treatment isn't going to cut it. I'll have to switch the healing pod to long-term hibernation mode. The chance of surviving hibernation's less than 10%? And worse, long-term use of the mask carries a high risk of damaging his mind and nervous system. Oof. But... The... Lenigus will be nothing but ashes, and this starship along with it. I don't know if I can fulfill my promise to you, Alfin. But if... If doing this will grant you even the slightest chance, I have to try. I hope it's enough. Please, live for me, Alfin. You must survive, Alfin. <sighs> hmm. That vision. It must have been from when Naori helped Alfin escape Lenigus. She sure went above and beyond the call of duty. Even with Lenigus crumbling down around her, 
She chose to stay put with her people. So that's why you lost your memories and sense of pain, and why you were asleep for that whole time. It was all the result of one agonizing decision Naori made to save your life. Yeah. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't even be alive today. I owe her everything. More than I could ever hope to repay. Now that you know how she felt, how do you plan on honoring her wishes? She kept her promise. If the Renan people she fought so desperately to protect are at risk from a malevolent force, then I owe it to her to carry on her fight. Naori was the one who put that mask on me, and made me Iron Mask. She did it to prevent your soul from tearing itself apart. She knew you might lose your memories and sense of pain as a result. But more than anything, she wanted you to survive. And you did. Some good stuff, though. It's a good thing we survived. No doubt about it. <coughs> Alright. Let's see. What's awaiting us in here now? Hmm. Anything good? Show us the way. Hmm. So no fast travel points, though. Had to change, but I'm seeing no signs of that walking in this room right now that we're gonna get that, unfortunately. A heavy treat. Mm -mm -mm. We now have six heavy treats. Not too bad, not too bad. We're doing pretty good on that, I'd say. And this is just a dead end. I mean, that is a door, but I mean, we can't go through that door right now. Uh oh. It's this room. A room from the spirit channeling ceremony. This place. We've seen this in one of Naori's memories. Of course. After 300 years, this is where it was held. The spirit channeling ceremony. This is where the Renis Alma was. So this is the place where you and Naori... The Renis Alma isn't here now. Nor is the Red Woman, it seems. I know it's difficult, Alfin. But there will be time to dwell on the past later. For now, we need to keep moving. Come on. Guess he still had some power over this room. Naori? What is this? Is it the work of Dana's will again? It's been a year since the ceremony. That day, I shut away inside of myself the power that caused Elfin to lose control. Since then, my visions of the future have grown more and more fearsome. Is this another memory? No. It's different this time. It's like she's speaking directly to us. <sighs> what we did back then. Not so much as a day passes when I don't think about it. About what was done to us. All in the name of a ceremony. The purpose of which we were never even told. As Sovereign, they linked Elfin's consciousness to Lenigus itself. The Renis Alma was intended to control his power, lest anything should slip through its cracks. That day, as Maiden, my role was to temper his power. I was meant to guide it forth, and give shape to the strength inside of him. Linked to Lenigus itself? But then, everything that's been happening... But that power showed me a vision. A vision of oblivion. When I realized that vision was a prophecy of the apocalypse we were about to unleash, I couldn't go through with it. 
But without a maiden, the ceremony was doomed. Alfin lashed out, his consciousness no longer his own. I did what I could. Using my abilities as the maiden, I tried to seal that power away inside of me. But it was too late. Lenigus had already been brought to its knees. Thousands upon thousands of lives so cruelly snuffed out. All because of me. Because of what I had done. With the destructive force now slumbering inside of me, I knew I had to find a way to dispose of it. Anything to make up for my failure. But I didn't know how. Especially since that power was astral energy itself. In which case, ironically enough, the Renis Alma seemed to be my best bet. That, at least, would hold the astral energy dormant. Assuming that no malevolent third party got to it first. With the Sovereign and Maiden's combined power, perhaps I could shift the chaotic energy inside me into the Renis Alma instead. That's what I hoped, but alas, it was not to be. The Renis Alma was lost, and Alfin the Sovereign was in a starship bound for Dana. My only choice was to seal away the destructive force inside of me using my powers as the Maiden, to buy the world what little time I could. The time needed for a new Renis Alma to be crafted, and for a new Sovereign to appear. Even if by doing so, it meant I would be passing the curse onto my descendants as well. Oops. Please, forgive me. I never meant to burden the future world with this threat, too. I only wish that there was something more I could have done. Wait, you can't just... Too late. It's the future now. Ha 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 ha. Ay ay ay. Well, that's unfortunate. Mayori. <sighs> that message just now. Was it directly from Naori? Or was it the Danon voice speaking through her? Oh. If only it would speak to us more clearly so we could understand. Whoa. What? Get These are the clothes that Naori and I wore during the ceremony three centuries ago. Okay, so they didn't just get cloned randomly. So you're saying this is the Maiden's outfit? That's right. These clothes are designed to resonate with the Sovereign and Maiden's abilities. They focus and enhance them. And they appeared now because... No reason. Naori must have left them here for the new Sovereign and Maiden. Knowing the day would come when they would need them in their fight against the Thorns. These outfits are directly linked to the answers we've been chasing this whole time. If they're here, it must mean it was Naori's will for us to find those answers as well. Locating the Renis Alma would allow us to neutralize the dark astral energy inside Xion, thereby silencing her Thorns. Is that what Naori's suggesting? It makes sense. After all, Master Cores and Spirit Vessels are both able to prevent the astral energy inside them from developing sentience. By that logic, it would stand to reason that the Renis Alma would have the same ability on a larger scale. We have a Maiden and Sovereign. Now all we need is the Renis Alma, and we'll finally be able to free you of your thorns. Shion. It's possible? You really think so? I do. We can rid you of your thorns and stop the world from falling to oblivion. Doesn't that result However, in our death, though? Didn't we go over this? ceremony already failed once. Even if our goal is different this time, we can't be sure the same thing won't happen again. 
We should take care not to be too optimistic. You're right. It's the barest sliver of a chance. But if there's even the slightest hope it can work, I'm willing to stake everything I've got on it. I... I know it's too early to let myself feel relieved, but... I just can't seem to help it. Just hearing there's the slightest chance, even though I know the world's still in great peril. It's selfish of me, I know, but... but still... No, it isn't! You found hope to believe in. It'd be strange if you weren't over the moon about it. Rinwell's right. We can rid you of your curse and still save the world at the same time. Thank you. Aoi entrusted us with the fate of all humanity. Now, it's up to us to prove that trust was well placed. Starting with a little game called Hunt the Renis Alma. Yeah, we've come all this way. Now we just need to search Lenigus and Rena until we find it. Yeah, we can protect the world and save Xion at the same time. I too shall lend my services. My knowledge of Renan lore is bound to be a useful asset. And they say modesty is dead. <laughs> Miracles just seem to follow wherever you go, huh? How do you know it's me they're following? We're all in this together, Xion. You included. Now let's get moving, shall we? Last I heard, we had an apocalypse to stop. <laughs> Thank you, Naori. You are most certainly welcome. So Naori sealed away the power that made me lose control of myself. She stopped my rampage and saved my life. But then, that power she'd sealed away was passed down to you. I'm so sorry, Xion. It's my fault that you're cursed. You're wrong. What happened to you was because of the ceremony and Naori's attempt to stop Oblivion. You paid a heavy price for it and then fell asleep for 300 years. The reason you lost your memories... ...is the reason for your curse. The, the thorns. thorns. It all leads back to them. But once they're gone, we can finally put an end to all this. When my thorns are gone... I never dared to dream that such a thing could be possible. No, the truth is, I think maybe I've always been dreaming about a life without my thorns. The touch of my family, or playing with my friends, holding hands with Rinwell, or giving Law a deserved smack, embracing everyone, all the normal things that people do together. I always wished I could experience them for myself. ...and finally know what they were like. Is it really okay for me to believe it can happen? I'm so scared of getting my hopes up. What if it doesn't work out in the end, and... That's not going to happen. I'm here to make sure it won't. Forget fate or destiny or anything else. We're going to live... <sighs> ...a normal life. There are a lot of things you still want to do, right? Yeah... ...you're right. It's such a strange feeling. I know that we've still got plenty of fighting up ahead, and it's for my sake, so I can live. You're worth fighting for. I believe you, Alfin. Good. I'll keep on fighting, for as long as it takes, until our future is finally in our hands. Yeah, you tell him. Holy macaroni, you Shion latest maiden. Oh, we got revitalize advanced healing art that restores all allies HP. Uh. <coughs> hmm. <coughs> I feel like we should wait for that, honestly. So there's gonna be in these outfits the rest of the game now. Okay. Okay. Thanks for having me disrupt. Why is it being cast? This sounds so bad, actually. This honestly doesn't even sound great. Like, this... I mean, 80... 80 CP, man! 
This would only be good under the circumstances that, oh, hey, everyone's basically dead, but they're like on one HP or something like that. I don't know. That's like the only circumstance that would even be a good idea, I feel. I don't know. So deal Arthalis, sword given to the chosen star when that deals out all their latent power so as to carry out the spirit channeling ceremony. Gom Arthalis, ceremonial garb that given to the chosen star when granting them endurance, withstand the immense power of the spirit channeling ceremony. Laze Fiercris, ceremonial garb given to the chosen maiden capable of interfering with astral energy. It's born to contain the sovereign's power. The woman with no walls. Sounds like this Naori chick had quite the big heart. Her position demanded nothing less than the sound of things. She didn't focus on differences, least of all those between Renans and Danans. Yeah, it was Naori who first showed me that such a thing was even possible. And then she saved my life by sending me back home to Dana. Not only that, but she willingly stayed behind on Lenigus for the sake of her people. It sounds like she was quite the hero, all right. A truly caring person. That's as if walls meant nothing to her. The ones separating the Renans from the Danans, or herself from others. She had no need for them. Which basically meant that she never had anything to break down in the first place, huh? Yeah. I think you may be right about that. You inherited that legacy. Her wish for the world. Don't I know it? She's kind of like a lodestar guiding our way, showing us what we can aspire to. Lodestar, that's a word I haven't heard in 7,000 years. Wait, what? <laughs> Pedestal where the Renis almost sat 300 years ago, now it gives off no trace of power. Rip. Rip the power. Wait, are we just gonna go... <coughs> I guess we're just gonna go further in, huh? Okay. Okay, well, if that's where we are going, then I guess, everyone, I suppose... Oh, whoa. Dang, that's some flashy splash art right there. We're really gonna end this game on six characters, aren't we? <laughs> oh, well, I forgot this is the safe in this episode, right? Yeah. Oh, well, it is what it is, but still, uh, I guess next episode that we go further into the Forbidden Zone... We got new costumes and everything, and they look cool, and I just realized Alpha's on 1 HP. What the heck is going on here? I don't even know. Anyway, everyone, I'll see you later. Have a good one. Let me know what you thought about that stuff today, and I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, everyone. You have reached the end of this video. But before we go for the day, i just like to give a big shout-out to the Tier 4 and 5 channel members. Phoenix Edgeworth, Akron X2, Menthi, Meister Papala, and Purple. Thank you so much for being awesome supporting the channel, everyone. If you too would like to get your name shout out at the end of each video and live stream, shout outs are available to all tier 4 and 5 channel members. I hope you all have an awesome day. See ya later!